Good afternoon. Um, well, it's my great pleasure to be here with Guy Hans, the founder, chairman, and CIO of Terra Firma, and arguably one of the most iconic protagonists of the European and international private equity uh, universe. Um, mm -hmm. We'd like to discuss a little bit here being in Berlin at Super Return, some of the implications of private equity these days um, about the public impact of the asset class, in particular the place in Germany where private equity for a long time has been the focal point of criticism from politicians and the media. The locus debate is still in everybody's memory. How do you look at those impacts and what's your view on the impact of the asset class on growth, uh, job creation and uh, this chance of the asset class in Europe going forward? Yeah, I mean, I think th there's a mistaken uh, understanding in, in Germany amongst politicians that uh, private equity is all about uh, cutting jobs, it's not about investment in its short term. Um, quite often uh, politicians in Germany get confused between hedge funds and private equity. Uh, the reality is when we look at what we, we do in private equity, uh, we invest very much for the long term. Uh, we put as much money into our businesses as we spend on, on purchasing them initially. So over the last several years, we've invested 7 billion euros in actual capex, which affects those businesses. Now that's money largely raised outside of Europe, which is creating jobs in Europe. Mm -hmm. So you know, private equity can be a, a real source uh, for creating growth uh, in an economy. And if there's an economy which really does need to create growth, that's the one in Europe. Very true. A skeptic would reply, however, that this is, this is all good, but at the end of the day, private equity is all about shareholder wealth creation. Are there any examples in your existing portfolio of businesses where you can actually point to things that you've done specifically that will also have a dual purpose by doing something good for you know, the social element that's there in Europe, the labor element that's there in Europe, and at the same time is beneficial for the target companies? Yes, I mean, quite definitely. Uh, it, it, it's always going to vary by company to company. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the advantages that private equity has is its, its flexibility and its ability to take a different approach mm -hmm. to a different business at a different time. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, when we uh, purchased Four Seasons Healthcare in the UK, mm -hmm. um, we looked very, very carefully at the relationship between the company, which had an antagonistic uh, relationship with the unions and was very uh, against having unionization. And then we looked at that in the context of the fact that the National Health Service is, is fully unionized. And we have entered into a, a multi-union voluntary recognition uh, approach. So we recognize three different unions, which uh, affects all 28,000 of our employees. Uh, it gives them the chance to join a union. Now we see it as having advantages for the patients. We see it as having uh, advantages uh, for us as an employer. And we see it as having advantages um, um, clearly for the employees and those advantages come through lower turnover, uh, they, get, they come through uh, greater uh, uh, quality controls and approval on a nationalised basis which when you are working very closely with a nationalised industry, uh, the health service, you need um, and we, we see it as having uh, advantages in terms of retention. So you know, it's a win-win. Now it's got a short-term cost obviously but long term, we think it's going to be good for the business, uh, good for uh, staff, and and um, good good for the good for the the social fabric. A very, very nice example of private equity actually doing something with a longer term perspective, which shows the differ difference to the hedge funds, which which they're often confused, especially in mm. Germany, where I guess such a measure would never would never be something that could be beneficial for them. Mm. Um, more broadly speaking, I mean this this is one powerful example, but Europe has is facing substantial challenges these days. And there's clearly, you know, at some point, a, an increasing discrepancy between what people think is desirable from a social standpoint and what just the requirements are from a capitalistic view. Do you see more confrontations that are going, going forward? What's the solution to all this? What's the role private equity can play going forward? Yeah, I mean, I think the, you know, we had a period of time, probably 20 years, when the ideology was very much on the invisible hand um, and people believed the free markets uh, would work forever and create and solve all problems uh, through creating um, just incredible growth. The reality is it came to a stop. Um, the, the answer though is not to go back to ideology, the answer is to find a pragmatic way forward. And the, the, the reality is that uh, we can invest money creating jobs um, and benefit from it. Um, and in the same way as you know, I was a, a Euro skeptic uh, for quite a long period, and I've had to moderate that and see that actually Europe has some huge advantages, which you can't have as an individual country. Mm -hmm. um, in the same way, I think uh, politicians need to moderate their ideology 
and focus much more on the practical and the pragmatic and say how do we all work together to move forward and achieve a growth agenda. Because the reality is, for the benefit of our, our investors, uh, growth is essential. And it, it, it doesn't help anyone to just spend a, a period of time just cutting, uh, cutting at each other. Very encouraging thoughts to hear. And many things we see in the private equity industry signal that there is a need of recognition of this need. Now, do you see the same level of pragmatism on the other side of the fence? Do you see changing mindset there as well of the traditional opponents of private equity to more look at the industry as something that can be beneficial if you, if you throw away a little bit of ideological baggage? Um, I, I think what, you know, what's interesting is uh, the, 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 the deal that we did with the unions in the UK. Mm -hmm. um, one of uh, the, uh, uh, probably you'd say, private equity's greatest opponents uh, amongst the unions in the UK said that he regarded that deal as a, a, a new dawn. Uh -huh. um, and you know he saw it as a chance to, you know, to effectively tear up the old rule book uh -huh. and say how do we go forward. So I, I think there is there is that opportunity. Um, I think you know it's it's very very easy in a time of stress uh, to to get caught into just attack. Uh -huh. uh, the reality is that you have to better move forward to that. And so we are seeing it, um, and you see it amongst some of the politicians in Germany. Um, you know the the, the The problem is that we, we live in a world where uh, political sound bites count for an enormous amount and it pushes people to say things which they might well, if they didn't have to play to the press, they might well not say. Uh, the reality is life is much more complex than a sound bite. Um, and I think, you know, it, the, the, we have the advantage in private equity uh, that we're not trying to get elected so that we can just focus on how do we create long-term value. And I think it's our job just to keep trying Uh, resolutely with a great deal of patience to get our message across and to then work responsibly uh, with unions, with politicians, with local, local government, uh, with our employees uh, to move companies forward uh, to achieve growth. Very good. Well, let, let's only hope that uh, this type of example will, see, will find followers both in private equity and in the counterparts for this. Thank you very much so. for the conversation. Thank Bye -bye. you. Thank you.